The paint on this Corolla is in terrible condition. There's water spots, water stains, there's pollen. So in this video, I'm just gonna take you through the process on how I would go about restoring the paintwork through correction and polishing. And I'm gonna add a few different steps in the process just to show you that you can do things differently and still get great results. Let's get started. So let's take a closer look at the paintwork. And as you can tell, they're just staining, maybe even a little oxidation, water spots. And this is like a very dark blue color. And because of this layer of filth that's on there, it makes it look very dull. And even if you were to wash it, you're not gonna get any gloss or shine out of it just because you have to do some form of correction or polishing to get the paint to gloss up again. First step is the washing phase. Now I'm gonna do things just a tad bit different just to show you that you can do things differently and still get great results. I'm gonna wash and clay and then correct and polish and I'm gonna agitate these tight areas right here just to get the dirt out of here. So I have my rinseless wash bucket. I have my rinseless pump sprayer but instead, what I'm gonna do is this bottle is literally just water and Dawn dish soap. That's it. And I'm gonna use that as my agitation solution. So I'm gonna spray the tight areas. I'm gonna grab my brush right here and I'm gonna agitate like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get all the dirt out of the tight areas. I'm gonna open up the handle here. And now, instead of using the rinseless solution, I'm gonna use the water and soap as my pre-spray. The reason why I wanna show you this is one, I see comments all the time where it's almost bashing or judging people for not having all the tools and products to get the job done. And I just can't stand that mentality saying like, oh, you have to go buy these things. You have to have these things in order to get the job done. Like, again, you could use soap and water as your clay lube as like your pre-spray as your wash there are like again if this is all you have that's fantastic i just can't stand that kind of mentality where people are gonna like talk down or think like hey it has to be done this one way or you're gonna do it wrong so this is just a towel this is in the actual rinse solution um but again if this is just so, uh, a wet towel that would work as well and i'm literally just gonna do a rinseless wash right here Also, I'm doing multiple vid videos on this vehicle. So that fender is already done. Uh, that part of the hood is already done. That's why I'm kind of going, I'm not doing a full wash process here either, just because I'm saving different spots for different vehicles. Okay, so we do that. This part is dirty, so we're gonna switch the side. All right, I'm not gonna dry it down right now, it's okay. I have my soapy water here, and I'm gonna use this as my clay lube. No big deal. The claying is done. I'm not gonna do an iron remover just because it's just gonna sit here and I don't wanna breathe all that in. So now again, because we are using Dawn soap, we can't just go in and dry it and I'm not gonna rinse it, right? Let's say you're in an apartment or whatever the case and you don't have water, I'm gonna do another rinseless pass, right? And I know you might be saying, well, there's so much work, why don't you just wash it? Again, if you have all that available, do it. But to some people, they don't have that and they have to work around things. So I'm just gonna do a, a rinseless wash right here just to get that most of that Dawn soap off. And I'm gonna dry it with a single towel. I would use a drying towel, but again, I'm saving multiple points, multiple areas for a different video. So I'm just gonna grab this little towel right here. All right, and this is the condition after we wash and clayed it. And you can tell, I mean, the dirt is obviously off the vehicle, but there's still a ton of swirls in the paint work. You still have, have all these stains right here. It looks like it's a little bit of oxidation up here. And overall, it still needs a lot of work. Okay, so for the correction, I'm using a Grids Garage G15. 
any polisher would work, even if it's from Harbor Freight, if it's a GG6, if it's a Rupes, LHR, whatever, whatever, they're all gonna work. This is the Oberk cutting disc or cutting pad, microfiber cutting pad, and then uh, Oberk cut. So this is my combo for removing the defects. So it's already slightly primed. So again, I don't, I don't do the whole three dots thing. I literally just kind of swirl the bottle around and do that, super simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on here. Hopefully you can see it good enough in camera and I'm not blocking the light. We're gonna tap this around right here. And we're gonna put it on setting dos two. And we're simply gonna spread the product around. All right, the product is spread, it's ready to work. I'm gonna put the polisher back on the paint. I'm gonna up it up to, let's say, four and a half. And I'm gonna go left, right, left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down. And we'll see how it comes out. So let's get the towel. Now what you can do is you wanna look through your light source to, to inspect your paintwork. I can't really do it here because where the camera's at, where the light's at, I'm a little at a disadvantage. But over time, before you start wiping it down, try to look through the light. For instance, I can move around even though it might mess up the shot, is that you wanna put the light in the paintwork and depending on a few factors, but you should work the product in enough to where it's almost translucent and you can see through the, through the compound or polish and you can actually see if you remove the defects because maybe you just need one other light pass and instead of wiping it down, loading the pad again and going at it again, you might just put the pad back on the paintwork. You might spray like a little bit of water just to kind of reactivate it and get to work. Maybe you just put one little, one little dot and start, and start correcting again. But here, me looking through the compound, I can tell that it's a great improvement, so we'll wipe down and inspect. Okay, and based on what I can see, that is a dramatic difference. I mean, we removed all that staining there, the bit of water spot that we had. So now we're gonna replicate that process on the entire door panel. Okay, so off camera, I blew out the pad. If you don't have an air compressor, you can use a brush, agitate or get a towel and agitate off any compound. That way you're always working with a clean pad. What's gonna really uh, hurt your, your, or what will have an impact on your results is if you're working with a clean pad or not. Because if your pad is clogged up and there's a lot of just uh, filth on there from what you're pulling out, you're not gonna allow the fibers to do the work if they're all clogged up. So make sure you're always working with a clean pad. Okay, so now we hit that section. I'm gonna hit this section just because on camera it's the easiest to record this flat second here. So again, we're gonna spread it around. Now over time, you'll kinda, you know, as you get more experience and more skills, you'll be able to work larger sections. So when you're first getting started, um, you can do like, I'd highly recommend you do smaller sections. That way you're more in control of the polisher. You're working smaller sections so you can really focus in your uh, energy on this one little section. And then over time, as you get more experience, you work a larger and larger section. Um, it's just gonna come with time and make it, you know, building up those, those skills and experience to understand how far you can really go. It's also dependent on the type of clear coat that you're working on. A harder clear coat, you wanna stay more uh, with smaller areas just because you have to put a bit more pressure and have to be a bit more aggressive versus a um, softer clear coat like let's say this one where you can work a larger area just because it doesn't take as much work to actually um, remove the defects out of the paintwork because the clear coat is soft so a few factors you have to play with so we spread it around we're going to put it on setting two. make sure the pad is always flat on the surface and spread it around
All right, now we're gonna bump it up to four and begin the, the correction. Again, the, the polisher should always stay flat on the surface. You wanna make sure the pad is always rotating and you never wanna stay in one spot for too long just because you're gonna create more heat. So you don't wanna put a ton of down pressure because you don't need to do that. And then two, always keep the polisher moving. That way you don't ever create too much heat in one area because heat can lead to burning through the paint, albeit it'll take a while. But nonetheless, just as a good practice, you don't wanna create as much heat in one particular area. So here we go. Another thing you can do is after you're done polishing, just kind of put your hand on the paint and just see how hot it is. This one is not hot at all. So we're gonna grab the towel and let's check our results. And there we go, it is looking fantastic. Here's the area where we haven't corrected yet and it's a night and day difference and we still have to polish this as well so we'll still get a bit more gloss and clarity out of that finish. But as you can tell, it's coming along fantastic. Now let's just do that on the entire door panel. All right, so the door panel for the most part is complete. Now we're gonna move on to the polishing. Now this, I'm actually doing what's kind of referred to as like a one and a half step, meaning I corrected it to remove the heavy defects, but I'm not gonna go and just polish it. I'm gonna do an all-in-one, meaning, oh, this just broke. I'm going to polish and it's gonna apply a protection at the same time. So this one here I'm using is from Rupes Uno Protect. And essentially, it's still going to refine the previous step. I kind of broke this. It's going to refine the previous step, but also leave a layer of protection. So I'm going to just kind of saturate the area a little bit. Do that right there. Again, I don't really care about it, make it looking pretty or uniform. So when it comes to polishing, you're not going to put as much down pressure just because you've already remove the defects with the cutting face. Right now, we're just refining the micro swirls that we put in the paintwork from the cutting face. So with this one, you're still gonna put down pressure, just not as much down pressure. You don't have to have as slow arm movement because again, we're just refining the previous step. So here, it's gonna be the same way as far as you're gonna tap it and spread it. You're gonna put it on speed two and spread it around. and then put it back on four and work it in. Same thing, going cross hatch pattern. Now, on this one, you're not gonna see a huge improvement in defect removal. That's already done, that was the cutting phase. What you're gonna see now is more clarity in the paintwork. Now, this is still dependent on the type of uh, clear coat, and I think if it's hard or soft, and the color of the vehicle. Meaning with this one, this is actually rather in the middle between soft and hard. So there's not much micro uh, scratching in here or micro swirls from the previous step, but you will see a little bit more clarity. Now other vehicles, other like, let's say a, a black colored vehicle on another, on another vehicle, it might have a ton of micro swirls in there. And then the polishing phase will really bring out the gloss and clarity because of the micro swirls that were put in there from the cutting phase. So here, we already spread it around. I'm gonna put it on speed four, and we're gonna say, use the same principles as far as keeping the pad flat on the surface, arm movement, cross hatch pattern, those are all the same. Now, naturally, because you're, again, you're not doing heavy cutting, 
you can work a larger section because it's gonna it's gonna move a lot faster it's gonna move a lot smoother over the paintwork because you're kind of just gliding over the paint so if you normally work a small section here for cutting when it comes to polishing since it's just refining the the the, the previous step you can kind of work like this you know just as a generalization you can work this large of a section so typically just me working if it wasn't for camera i mean i could probably do this whole section right here with one pass just because you can work it like that now again it just comes down to your experience and skill level but now we'll put one extra little dot on top i'm not going to wipe down the paint right now because it's kind of unnecessary that would just add a lot more steps into the process i'm going to just hit this part right here and then just go one pass and wipe it all down just because i know it's going to come out good and i'm going to be able to finish faster by not adding the wiping down step every single time I do a section. So I'll put a few dots right here, spread it around, put it on speed two, spread it, and then go to four and work it in. Let's go ahead and wipe it down. And the polish again is just removing effortlessly. I'm putting no down pressure and it's coming off like butter. So there's still some areas I need to wipe down or touch up, but it is looking significantly better than what we started. I'm gonna pan to the left side where I haven't washed it or touched it. And you can just tell there is a bunch of contaminants, streaks, water spots, and you come over here, it is looking significantly better. I hope this video helped you out in any way. Hopefully you picked up some tips, tricks, or some nuggets of information. I kind of figured I'd record the process as I was working. It was kind of more of a laid back, just kind of shooting, you know, talk and shoot kind of situation. So let me know if you have any specific questions about the process, the products, anything like that in the comment section down below. And then if you want to look at the tools and products that I use, that'll also be linked down in the description box. Thank you very much. And I'll talk to you on the next one.